How's it going, everybody? This is Cameron White with White Light Astrology, giving you guys your monthly forecast for Leo. What is up, y'all? I should say us because I'm a Leo as well. So what's going on for you guys this month? January 2018, we're in the new year now. You're ready to kick ass like usual. I mean, that's all we do, really. But a couple of things going on that are pretty big. Uranus is going direct. Uranus has been in our ninth house since 2011, really emphasizing, you know, like, what do we really believe? What are we wanting to learn? Really to understand who we are. Uh, Aries in the ninth house is we have a very spiritual attachment to our identity, to our sense of um, self, our personality with what we're capable of, with what we're willing to go towards, what we're willing to act upon, what do we believe about ourselves. And with Uranus being right here, this has been wife's and I mean, a bunch of Leos have been really just been waking up. Like, I don't know one Leo that's still like not there yet. But basically with Uranus being right here, this is, bring, this is bringing all of this to a very heightened uh, energetic level. Um, Uranus will be going direct on the third. So right as the new year kicks off, we're going, Uranus goes direct, all planets are direct, so everything's moving forward for the most part. Um, but with Uranus going direct, we're going to start to see the, the inspiration and the ingenuity and the um, ecstasy almost of the excitement, the electricity of when we really get to tap into that side of ourselves that uh, finds our power, that finds our meaning, that finds our purpose, that finds our path, or that finds our place uh, or where to go to almost in a sense. This is what's going to bring us that heightened sense of, you know, power, of understanding of ourselves, of action, of moving forward, of all of that Aries energy. So as that goes direct, prepare to see that, you know, shift. It's been retrograde for a little while, so we've been really internalizing a lot of this, you know, really kind of just going over what all of that really means, how that, you know, can happen inside, how we can bring that feeling to ourselves. But now that it's moving forward, we can start to see the manifest manifestations of that come into the more immediate environment, more into the immediate reality. Um... Saturn just moved into our sixth house. It's time to go. It's time to work, boys. Um, Saturn uh, in that sixth house of, you know, routine of what our health is, what our habits are, what are we really thinking? Are we working on ourselves? Are we employed? Are we busy every single day? What are our habits? You know, in, uh, the more of the smaller processes in our life is, are we being of service? And with Saturn right here going into Capricorn, this is an area of, the, of your life where you're going to start to want to take more seriousness. And, this is, and of course, this is going to be going on over the next three years. So you'll hear me talk about this as we go on. However, now that he's shifting, we just had Saturn in the fifth. We just learned about what we really want and what does that really mean when we want something and how are we going to do it and how are we going to go about it and understanding that it's been feeling limiting. So we've been having to break free, break free especially with uh, you know, Uranus being in Aries uh, with Saturn right there uh, trining it this whole time. It's been very uh, expressive. It's been very ready to go. Um, however, Saturn went through the fifth house. We learned all that shit. We came to conclusions, we understood it, we know where we want, we know where we're going, we know why we want to go there, we know who's going to be there, and you know, all, everything else that you can think of. As Saturn moves into our sixth house, it's about what are we doing every single day to get there? What are we really creating? What do our habits show? What do our actions show? And where is our mind, and where are, where is our mind really going? Because Virgo rules the sixth house energy, and if you, use the, uh, if you throw your sun sign over there on the ascendant, you start using the solar houses, then we have Saturn going into our sixth house. And this is about where are we limiting ourselves? Where are we feeling restricted? And this is going to manifest in health. This is going to manifest in, you know, trying to get your shit together. You may feel a little bit of a pull in employment. And I don't want to say, you know, like you're not going to get a job, but it's going to be working just a bigger matter for us right now. Working is a very serious thing. And we have to really work on how we are being as professional as possible in an everyday sense. Saturn and Capricorn is getting that, getting your shit together is what I always like to say. And in the sixth house of routine, of service, of employment, of health, of all those Virgo qualities, this is the time to really take all of that to, to essence and apply it in that Saturn and Capricorn way of really creating effective results, of really going out of your way and doing the work and because Saturn is going to show us the work we're going to we're going to have to be completely changing our habits we're going to be having to really take a look at things differently and start you know buckling down and everything like that it's uh that's just where we're at we got to be more of a sense of service this is also Virgo we have to be 
giving back in any way possible. We have to be helping others in any way possible. And this is with that Saturn and Capricorn. Like we have to really put something down that's feasible, something that will actually serve people in a really big manner. Uh, and you know, whatever that may look like to you. And this of course, of course is going on for the next three years. I'll keep going on about the rest of January, but just wanted to hit on Saturn and Capricorn for us. Jupiter, Mars, going through the fourth house. Really learning about what is going on inside, where we need this nurturing, where we need to be taken care of. And as Jupiter goes through our fourth house in Scorpio, we're really pulling apart the whole, or no, not the, yeah, through the fourth house. Um, is that right? Yeah, through the fourth house. That's where we get to this point where, you know, we've learned, we've learned, we've learned. What are our beliefs about that? When Saturn went through Scorpio, the home, the private life, it was kind of a, you know, our emotional needs, where we need to be nurtured, where we need to be cared for, our unconscious uh, was really under a lot of attack with that Saturn and Scorpio. But now Jupiter's going through here and we're really learning a lot about what beliefs that really played out, how those beliefs that we created around that time, how that's really being played out. And with Mars conjuncting it this month, he will conjunct exactly at on um, the 8th, Monday the 8th of January, when we have that conjunction, that's when um, we're gonna see a lot more of that belief system that we have, the, where we're really sensitive. We're gonna start to see that come to fruition more and more. And when I mean fruition is with this Mars energy right here is, we're gonna want to impulsively act on it. We're emotionally, you know, it's, what do they call it, like impulse buying almost in a sense. We're gonna be very triggered is a good word as well. Throughout this, you know, next couple of months, or next, not the next couple of months, next couple of weeks of really, where is our energy showing up and how is that being related to our beliefs around, you know, what we experience in our home and private life? And this is Scorpio energy. This is, you know, uh, you know, really dark stuff. It, you, you, you wanted to escape. You wanted to free yourself. And now you got all this energy. You want to keep moving forward, but where are you still putting, where are you still holding control and holding on to things that aren't really serving you around what it is that you did when you grew up, where it is that you hold yourself back in your home life and you know, how you live your day to day life. What, how are you not letting yourself get your needs and your wants and your desires? Where are you not letting yourself nurture yourself? And as Mars conjuncts it, we're going to start seeing a lot more of that energy start to come out where we're like, oh shit, I really am not doing that. Oh shit, I'm really not in alignment with that and I need to change it. And that Mars and Scorpio is really going to come in and just, just go in, change it, everything will be good. Um, Mars will then move into Sagittarius in the fifth house where Mars and Sagittarius is always going to be great for us. This is a time to really explore what it is our wants are and start doing things different. This is a good time to do something different, something that's more creative, something that's more fun, something that you would have to learn something, really challenge yourself with. Um, as Mars goes into Sagittarius, this is the time to take action on the things that we enjoy, the things that are going to enlighten us in any way possible, and especially through this Mars energy of action, of, you know, pick up a new sport, or, you know, start a new, not, not necessarily a new habit, but maybe go hiking once a week at, your, at a spot, or pick up, buy a bike, get a bike for Christmas, and, you know, ride it somewhere, or something like that. With this Mars and Sag energy, just do something that you enjoy, find that creative expression, and really do something with it. I think this is gonna help a lot of us Leos. We've been, it's been kind of funky since the eclipse, huh? And uh, it's just been everywhere, or honestly, since like October. And as we have this switch, that's when you're gonna to start to kind of have like a better energy sense to, your, to you, a better outlet for all of that built up energy that you got inside of you. So don't worry about that. Venus is in Capricorn, she's going into Aquarius, so she's gonna be going over our descendant. This is where we go, okay, we have to really, you know, as Saturn's been in Capricorn, Venus just entered Capricorn. As Venus goes through Capricorn, this is gonna be like, uh, you know, like I'm really wanting to put more effort into working, put more effort into what I gotta do every single day, what my health's gotta be like, what am I, be, am I being of service? Like very Virgo energy of like nitpicking and analytical and Venus is in Capricorn, so it's very like, unemotional around this, very raw. It could be very, um, like there's no other way. Like you can't have fun. You can't, you know, you having fun is, you know, loving your work and work loving you type of deal. Like just fully embedding in it and uh, really just going for it. With the Venus and Capricorn, don't, don't take away from yourself to give to other people. Um, you can't, I mean, because if you're taking from yourself to give to others, you're just, they're just, you're just taking from everybody else. 
with that Venus and Capricorn aspect though, make sure that you are getting what your needs are. You, you are emotionally in control, that you're not passive and that you're not, not open. Like be okay with being vulnerable. And this is because this is Venus energy. This is to put our heart into it. This is to put our love into it, put our want and our really value and cherish and treasure what it is that we're really working on in our lives. And this, that's that Venus and Capricorn aspect. Um, as she flies through Capricorn, she'll then enter Aquarius on the 18th. And that's when we're going to start to see things way differently. This is when Venus goes over our descendant, really focusing on what our needs are from other people. How do we focus on other people? What, how do you need to work with people and how do people need to work with you? And as Venus goes into Aquarius and goes through the seventh house, as we start looking at, you know, relationships, marriage, law, other people, that contract type of stuff, um, you're going to start to see a whole new uh, world almost as in a sense is what I like to call Aquarius. It's kind of like, well, whatever you've built and achieved on Capricorn energy is going to flow into your Aquarius energy. And it's like this Capricorn energy of in the sixth house of building, of routine, of structure, of health, of habit. We're going to see that flow into relationships. We're going to see that flow in to really how we work with other people and how we get what we, like how to create a win-win situation. Seventh house is ruled by Libra, and it's all about balance. It's all about creating that win-win. It's all about creating that peace, almost in a sense. And as Venus enters Aquarius, look at things differently. How can you be more creative? How can you really act upon your, you know, creative impulses, that Uranus energy of, you know, oh, I have an idea. How can you act upon that? How can you really dive into and express and feel What's really, I don't want to say going on inside you, but the, the creative mind that you have. What do you need to express? What do you, how, do you need to reach out and be of service to other places? Do you need more friends? Do you need to be acquainted with more people? What do you want? And as far as, you know, like that Aquarius, like Venus is what do you want? Aquarius is going to be, you know, either isolation or alienation. Like you don't want to be around people, especially in something like the seventh house, or you're going to want to really dive into everything that is relationships, everything that is joyous about it, of working with people, of bringing balance and harmony into your life. And that you could really start to see that come into play, uh, you know, once she does leave the sixth house, because after you build those daily habits, after you get that routine down, after you really kind of fix and heal everything, it's kind of like you bring that balance into your life and everything's pretty good for the most part until it's time to change again. So a lot of that energy going on this month. Uh, Mercury is finally direct. We know what we want. Uh, good Lord. Mercury is retrograde in that solar fifth house is like, oh, I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know. Everything is blah, 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 blah. So now we're done with that. Now Mercury is going to be going into Capricorn where it's like, okay, I'm really focused on working. I'm really focused on creating this result. How can you put your mindset into that every single day? What are you really thinking about? How are you communicating? How are you talking to yourself? That's the biggest thing is yourself dialogue. What are you telling yourself every single day? Because if you're telling yourself you suck or, you know, you can't have love or you can't have money or any of those type of things every single day, even if it's just a joke, it's affecting you in some sort of way. And Mercury and Capricorn, you're going to have to, I don't want to say toughen up. You're going to find it a little bit, you know, you're going to see that there's things that need to be improved. And with that Mercury and Capricorn, it will be in the sixth house. So it will be a very efficient place for us to really get a grip on Mercury as far as, you know, what are we really thinking? Is that really healthy for us? What are we really talking about? Is that healthy for us? And is, does that work? Is that efficient? Is that, you know, helping us grow? Is that helping us create? Is that helping us have stability in our lives and have money in our lives and be employed or have a job or whatever it is that you may find yourself in the situation of. Then Mercury will go through the sixth house, then enter Aquarius on February 1st. Again, more about the relationship aspect, more about what's really possible. We're going to be kind of lost in our heads in February like usual, but that is uh, for next month. Um, we have a full moon in Cancer in the 12th house. This is where it gets a little bit interesting, and uh, us Leos are, man, prepare for the prepare for the splash. It's kind of like uh, you know we're all on fire, a good time, and we're at you know whoops, we're at Splash Mountain, and uh, we get wet, or we're at Sea World, and we get way wet when we didn't want to. Um, yeah, fuck Sea World, by the way. Um, anyway, full moon in Cancer. This is happening in our twelfth house. This is all coming to accumulation of what we really, you know, learned this past year and how we're moving forward. What do our needs are? 
We're going to find this in the 12th house realm of our subconscious, of unacknowledged and repressed parts about ourself. Cancer just so happens to be in our 12th house, so it's no wonder why our emotions are kind of like, huh? I don't really know what my emotions are. I don't really get it. Even though we have a lot of passion, we have a lot of pride, all that kind of good stuff, it's like the emotional part of us could be really locked up and shelled away. This is a, uh, with this full moon right here, we're going to see a lot of energy come out of this because in order to get the results that we want with the Saturn and Sun and Capricorn and Venus and Capricorn and Mercury and Capricorn of working and efficiency and getting on a ship, we're going to have to learn how to become vulnerable, Cancer, learn how to trust yourself and other people, that Cancer energy of opening up, of receiving love and nurturing because you're able to give it as well, you have to receive it. And doing this in parts that we repress, parts of this that we parts of ourselves that we don't acknowledge all the time and that are very sensitive and emotional and we just kind of, you know, put the crab shell on it and just kind of ignore it, hope for better days. But that's how this new year's starting, right off the bat. If you want to create these results you're looking for, you gotta have that emotional intention. You've got to bring up what you don't wanna bring up. You've gotta feel it, you've gotta embrace it, and it's time to move forward. Then we have a new moon in Capricorn after the full moon in Cancer. So much easier after the new moon in Capricorn. That'll be setting the intention, setting the road work for what we're really gonna be creating, especially for the next six months especially when the nodes go into Capricorn and Cancer coming up in the next couple of years. And uh, I think we'll see a lot of energy from this time really set, for, set you know, come to, fru I don't want to say come to fruition all the way then, but like, I think we'll see a lot of connections from here to there. But Leo, that's what I got for you guys. Thank you so much. I'll be seeing you next month and I love you.